And you need to know to be able to purchase that which is pleasing to Allah is also an act of worship connected to your sustenance. So the fact that now I've earned my first hundred pounds a day, for example, just an example, my first hundred pounds a day, it does not mean I can go and do what I want. Many people, when they start earning initially, they don't realize the value of that money. Unfortunately, shaitan comes to some and makes them think that they can now spend it on haram and just enjoy even if it is outside the boundaries of what Allah has ordained. So you find people spending the money and I don't want to mention the list of sins because there are so many, but they spend it on that which is haram sometimes, developing bad habits, becoming addicted to that which is detrimental to you, your family, your health, your body, and primarily your connection with Allah. But when you earned the money, my brothers, my sisters, there is only a small amount that you actually need to survive. The rest of it, Allah is just watching. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to build your hereafter? Today, mashallah, we are in this beautiful Greenwich Masjid. We are utilizing the facility. I want you to think to yourself, they are building, they are expanding. What is the value of your presence here today? It is priceless, subhanallah. What is the value of your presence here today? Could we say one pound? Actually, no, it's much more than that. How much have you paid to come here today? The answer is zero, nothing. You did not pay to come here. It's the house of Allah, but there are expenses here. There are bills to be paid here. There is an expansion that is happening here. If every one of us had to pay one pound, for every salah that we made in a masjid just because we used the facility, the problem of all the masajid would be over and the salaries of the imams would be such that our children, not just our children would want to be imams, but we would start learning the Quran to become an imam. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. No one has forced anyone to pay, but when Allah places it in your heart, to give towards his house, it's a sign of acceptance. That wealth that you have spent, the one pound, every time you came into the masjid and you put it into the box, subhanallah, just as a charity on your own, just that one pound, do you know what? It will multiply. Every time people have benefited from the facility, you get a full reward. Today we have a few thousand people here. You would get thousands of rewards, subhanallah. For everyone who read salah, what a wise spending. So the point I'm raising is when you are spending, not only should you abstain from prohibitions, but try and make sure your investment for the hereafter bears the maximum fruit. Put your money where you know that it's going to give back to me in the eyes of Allah something that is huge even if I don't see a multiplication in this world although Allah will most likely give it to you starting here. So if you have money to spend remember don't just waste it. It does not mean because I have 10,000 or 100,000 or a million that I should just blow that money to the left and to the right and live such a luxurious life that distances me from Allah. Mark my words. You are allowed to have a beautiful car. You are allowed to have a lovely home. But if that is going to distance you from Allah, then you've got to draw a line. You have to draw a line. Look at those in need. Were you to help them, you would find Allah. So when we speak about wealth, my brothers, my sisters, as much as everyone wants it, we need to make sure that we earn it in a proper way. And more than that, make sure you spend it in the best possible way. I'm not encouraging you simply to stay away from spending it in the wrong. That is a prohibition already from Allah. But I am telling you, think and try and spend it in the best possible way. There are some people sometimes who earn 
but they don't spend the wealth on their own family members. Their own family members. Your children need something. Your spouse needs something. Your parents, whoever else needs things. But subhanallah, what we do, we hold back as though if we have held back the day we die, we're going to be considered champions when we've held back because we were known to the world as multi-millionaires. Islam works the opposite way. The deen of Allah, the religion works the other way. How much have you spent actually makes you the winner, not how much you saved. Because when I save money, you know what will happen to it? It's going to be distributed amongst my heirs as soon as I close my eyes. And facts, statistics prove that the more you leave, the more likely your children will fight each other for a slice of what you've left. The less you leave, the more likely they will have love amongst each other because there was no reason to fight. That goes to show my brothers and sisters, when you have wealth, please spend it in a good cause. Spend it, use it. Yes, you may want to save for a rainy day indeed, but don't become miserly. This is why when Allah describes the true worshippers of his, he says, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا أَنفَقُوا لَمْ يُسْرِفُوا وَلَمْ يَقْتُرُوا وَكَانَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ قَوَامًا They are those whom, when they spend, they are neither wasteful nor are they miserly, but they have a balance. They know what to do. They know this is someone in need, let me give. This is a good cause, let me spend. This is a masjid, let me give. How many of us have given to the masjid? How many of us give every week or every day? One pound or two pounds, subhanAllah, to the masjid. We use the water, we use the electricity, we use the carpets, we use the facility. We use so much, we come and we do so much, but we've never thought of putting one pound, one, 50p. Start off with 10p, my brothers, my sisters. Allah will open your doors. It's not got to do with the figure. It's got to do with the intention and the heart. So this is something very important. My brothers and sisters, on the day of judgment, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that the son of Adam on that day will not move until he's asked about a few things. One of them is his wealth. Where did he get it? Where did you get it from? How did you get it? Did you rob? Did you steal? Did you deceive? Did you cheat? Subhanallah. May Allah protect us. May Allah grant us barakah. And secondly, where did you spend it? It doesn't mean that I've got everything. I can do what I want. No, I need to make sure that it is done in a proper way. So I invite you, my brothers and sisters, I invite you today to revisit your connection with your wealth because that will determine your connection with Allah. Do you realize that Allah is the owner of sustenance? Do, re do you realize that Allah is the one who is taking account of every penny that you have? So seek the forgiveness of Allah for where you have faulted, where we have spent our monies on that which was haram, that which was displeasing to Allah. May Allah forgive us. May Allah grant us a new beginning. May we be from among those who can reach out to brothers and sisters in need in such a way that when we are in need, Allah will automatically reach out to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every single one of us. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'ani wa sunnah. Wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bima fihima min al-ayati wa al-hikmah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum wa lisa'iri al-muslimin. Fastaghfiruhu innahu jawadun kareem. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.